Welcome everyone to the latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm your host, Jim Dempsey. Jim and Java program is designed to answer your fundraising questions. This week we'll be addressing the topic of dinners and events and we've got a series of questions. If you've got questions, please submit those. Uh, at uh, devfstrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java if you use Twitter. If you would prefer an email, please email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com and also leave a comment below should you have any questions. And as we address the topic of dinners, I would love to find out what kind of success each of you have had from the area of dinners. So if you've had success, please list that in the comment section below. And let me know if uh, you've had success, if you've done them, if you're thinking about doing dinners, just let me know what that is. Let's jump right into our first question. Paul in New Hampshire asks, when are the best times of the year to do a vision event? Well, Paul, thanks for that question. I appreciate that. I get that often. And uh, I know that every area, especially in the United States, varies greatly in uh, what activities are going on within those particular states. And of course, climate really impacts when uh, dinners and events are the most effective. But as a general range, what I say is March 15th to May 15th and September 15th to November 15th. Those seem to be the best times to do a vision event. Now, in Minneapolis, March 15th could be snow packed and it would be very difficult for people to get out in March. And I know I've had people tell me that, oh, we're from Minneapolis and we're hardy souls and that the, uh, the, the snow would not bother us. Well, in all honesty, uh, it might not bother you. You might brave it to get in your car, to go to work, to get a paycheck. But when it comes to a dinner for a nonprofit organization where you're gonna be asked to give money, uh, there is some hesitancy about getting in your car in a blizzard in uh, two or three or five or 10 or 12 inches of snow. There's a big difference with that. But yet March 15th in Tampa, Florida might actually be for some even a little late if you're a nonprofit organization in Tampa, Orlando, Miami, and you're wanting to capture those snowbirds who come down at that time of the year, uh, you might set your event for early March or even late February. But on average, we find that uh, starting around March 15th is, is about the earliest and about the best time. Now on the back end, you also have to think about when does schools start in your area. In a lot of school systems around the United States. Schools don't start until after Labor Day, but there are enough, especially in some of the Sunbelt states, uh, enough schools that start and they open up in the first week of August. So you might have a month of school under your belt that you could have a dinner in early September or late September uh, and, and it not really impact the, the partner very much. But for the most part, we find that we definitely don't want to do a dinner before Labor Day, but we have to really be careful. We want to wait and make sure that vacations are done and that people are starting to get into a regular routine. That really makes for the best logic and best rationalization for doing a dinner earlier in September. Now on the back end, surprisingly, we find some of our best events are done the weekend before Thanksgiving. Now, yes, you're gonna have some people that are going to be traveling that weekend, leaving early to beat the crowd. They're figuring they only, at best, maybe are gonna work three days the following week. So they're looking at a, um, uh, starting that uh, starting their vacation that weekend but most of the time people aren't going to start before Tuesday or Wednesday for a Thanksgiving vacation so having your dinner the weekend before that especially the Friday because a lot of times people won't leave till Saturday anyway you could do a Friday dinner and really as we start to head towards that time of the year it's more of a time of Thanksgiving more of a time of appreciation more of individuals assessing how grateful they are for their life, for their attitudes, for the, the gifts
gifts that they've been given, the blessings they've received, and as a result, they want to give back to nonprofit organizations. So some of our most effective dinners have actually occurred the weekend before Thanksgiving. But of course, any weekend in November generally is a pretty good weekend. You do have to worry a little bit about the weather, about snow coming in early and maybe surprising you. But uh, for the most part, that's, uh, that shouldn't be something that you'd have to worry too much about. So, Paul, I hope that answered your question, and uh, it was a good one, and I'm, I'm asked that very often because the dates for those are very important. Well, our next question is from Rich in Indianapolis, Indiana, and Rich asks, how early should you start planning for a vision event? Well, that's a tremendous question, and um, I, over the years, I, I have seen dinners tried uh, as early as two or three weeks from the date uh, that they're going to do an event. And of course, an event of that magnitude, um, as an example, I've got a checklist that I have the, of 207 items in my dinner manual that uh, I recommend for people to do and, and uh, on our website. And it, um, trying to accomplish 207 tasks some very complicated, very important, in two to three weeks is just not going to get done. Uh, I would, if given the, the, the best amount of time, I would love to start and recommend as early as six months beforehand. But on average, we see some pretty good success with uh, anywhere between 14, 16, and 20 weeks. Those tend to be, I, I definitely would not go any earlier than 14. I lean more toward the 16. And if given the 20 weeks, I would do that. Now, why do we need that much time? As I said, just in my model of doing events, I've got 207 items that are on that agenda. You could do 207 items. They all need to be done. You could do those in three weeks, but you wouldn't be going to bed at night. You wouldn't have any activities. You probably would not be performing the function of your nonprofit organization. In all likelihood, all you'd be doing for two to three weeks is living this event. But if you spread that out over six months or over 14 to 16 to 20 weeks, you're going to, it's going to be much easier, much more manageable, much more palatable. And especially if you're using volunteers and, uh, and staff, board members, it, it is just so much more enjoyable and so much more manageable by spreading that time out. And so I would, I would really strongly encourage you to take the amount of time that you need especially as you're starting out, when you're looking for a venue, when you're selecting a date, when you're trying to negotiate and choose menus, and especially as you're recruiting table hosts and, and getting those table hosts aligned and then producing printed materials that you might have or even uh, email marketing that you may use, all that, you still need graphic art even for email marketing. So all those kinds of things are extremely important when it comes to doing an event and giving yourself enough lead time to do that event is extremely valuable and extremely important. Important. So I hope, Rich, that that answered your question. I hope as you do your event that you will definitely be leaving yourself enough time. Well, that's it for this episode of Jim and Java. I hope that this was valuable. Uh, I've got a number of videos out there, out on our playlist on how to do events. Please check those out. Uh, once again, uh, we rely a lot on your questions for Jim and Java for this broadcast. Please submit those if you're a Twitter user at devfstrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And especially if you prefer email, developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as I always say, I hope that you are able to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.